uh, we're going to be continuing today with uh, learning unit two. As I, I believe we started it a bit last week where we were talking about the prokaryotes and the origins of uh, metabolic diversity. Uh, just for housekeeping rules, once again, be reminded that uh, Ms. Sumaya mentioned that she's going to be load shedded from 10 to 12. So she will join us, I think, after 12. But in the meantime, uh, Vanessa just jot your or put down your student number for attendance register on the chat box. And if you've got any question that you want to ask, feel free to just stop me. And I see this uh, this session, we, we have very few, we just, so at least we can have engagement. And uh, if you wanna put your question on the chat box, that is also fine. So I will be able to, 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 to see it and address it as, as as in as much as I can, and uh, yeah, if there if you've got any question or any suggestion before I proceed, you are welcome to just shout just now. Yeah, so you can proceed, sir. Thank you so much, and hopefully others will join us as we continue. So prokaryotes and the the origins of metabolic diversity is that um, organisms. Informally called, uh, they, they've been informally called prokaryotes pro and have inhibited the planet Earth for more than 3.5 billion years for now, as, as to this point as we're speaking right now. And uh, their existence can be pro pronounced much longer than the one for eukaryotes. Uh, so if you want to just you check out on the differences between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes right there you can already deduce that a uh, prokaryotes existence is has been pronounced much longer than that of eukaryotes and uh, these prokaryotes are said to have evolved at least to 2.2 2 billions years ago although prokaryotes are microscopic they are some of them, which are numerous, that are probably account for more than half of a of more than half of Earth biomass, which is which is quite something. That uh, organism, which are microscopic, they constitute to and they account for over more than a half of the Earth biomass, which is quite something, right there. So prokaryotic species are. Um, are well known to adapt to a vast range in the land and water and all of that. And uh, prokaryotes can tolerate extreme conditions such as a very low pH. You remember on the last session, I don't know if you were attending the BLG 1501, the last part that we were talking about, we were talking about pH. We were talking about pH and very low pH. Then this uh, prokaryotes, uh, can you still hear me, Vanessa? Using yes, sir, I hear you, sir. Thank you. So they can tolerate extreme conditions. Uh, these conditions are just uh, extreme. By extreme, they just mean that uh, these are conditions which are uh, intolerable. Intolerable, the extreme is that, uh, let, let's say it's cold. What, what we will find extreme will be too cold. If it's hot, you what we find as extreme will be high temperatures, like if you move mostly to the north, uh, you will find that during summer, the, we do have some very, very, very extreme hot temper temperatures. And again, it's stated here in number two, too cold or too cold. And some have been found to be living within rocks, which are below three, over below 3.2 kilometers of the Earth's surface. So that's quite something to be able to can uh, 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 tolerate such conditions and uh, their ability to to adapt to a broad range of habitats help uh, us you and me as scientists to explain why these prokaryotes are the most abundant organism on earth and the members of the domain of uh, this bacteria which are uh, archaea bacteria and archaea they cause diseases such as tuberculosis, tendencies, respiratory infections, 
and the food poisoning in 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 in, in, in humans. So I just put here it's just a typo error here on this one. It's it's, it's also number number. It's, this will be number four. This one and food poisoning. So so, so these are one of the diseases that. Uh, caused by so 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 they may ask you what, what some of the diseases which are uh, caused or as part of the members of this domain bacteria and archaea. So there are tuberculosis, tantanus, respiratory infections, and some food poisoning in humans. So you might have to to to, to look out for that. So one of the reasons if they could expect you to tell them or why are how uh what question does prokaryotes help to describe why are they useful or why are they important yeah the basic question will be why are they important then you might actually have to to deduce the answer that their ability to, uh, to, to 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 adapt to a broad range of habitats or their ability to tolerate even extreme conditions that we mentioned before in the previous slides, the conditions such as low pH, too cold or too hot low temperature, and being able to adapt and found living below the 3.2 kilometer of the Earth's surface. This helps uh, biologists or scientists to explain how these are the abundant organisms on planet Earth. So, however, this bacteria and the archaea. They, 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 they also play an essential role in biosphere, in biosphere and in that they are decomposers. They break down organic molecules into their components. Without this remarkable microorganism, uh, certain elements such as carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, they, they will remain locked up in the waste and dead bodies of plants. And so the main picture here is that they, 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 they do play a crucial role as decomposes so decomposes you, you you need to understand i think we always mention this that decomposition it's it's it's, it's a very significant process especially in the biosphere in the ecosystem for the renewal so that there's a renewal of biodiversity there's a renewal of, of vegetation there's a renewal of that ecosystem or that ecosystem for the proper terminology is that the, that ecosystem could be uh, sustainable so that there will be sustainability and decomposition plays a, a huge part of that uh, role and this uh, uh, prokaryotes this bacteria and aga they play a role as decomposers because if it wasn't for them this uh, 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 carbon nitrogen and phosphorus some of them will remain as waste and not being useful in in the biosphere. So what in your notes or your lecture will be expecting you to, to achieve is that then that you will describe the structure of bacteria and archaea. We will examine the adaptation and diversity and enormous ecological impact of this uh, 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 bacteria and archaea and prokaryotes. Why is this important? This is important because if you want to test or you want to see the tone of your examiner or your lecturer as to how what they're going to ask you in your exam or what they're going to ask you in your test or what can you expect in your assignment you need to 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 to, to check on this the the out this just like a take home that your examiner is saying uh, after this when we have done this unit this is what we are trying to find this is the objective this is the aim or this is the reason why we are doing this chapter and these are the questions that we're gonna find yourself. It might not be in the same form. It might not be structurally composed like this, but what he's trying to say is that you will, in a way, all the questions that he's gonna abstract from you guys will be describing the structure of bacteria and archaea, the adaptations and diversity of those and in, in those organisms. So. This is one you should underline whenever you go through the notes or whenever you're studying so that you will be able to attain and be able to, 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 to get those. So also 
this uh furthermore you by the end of this learning unit you should be able to name the two main branches of prokaryotes you should be able to describe the structure functioning and reproduction of bacteria discuss ecological impacts of bacteria describe the organization and specialization of bacterial cell describe the structure composition and function of prokaryote cell walls distinguish between the staining properties of gram positive and gram negative i saw one of these in your past question paper explain how genetic organization of the prokaryotic genomes differ from that of eukaryotic cells so the differentiation or the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes the description of bacterial cell the functions of prokaryotic cells and how these structures are described and to their ecological impacts. So these are the things that if by just reading this on your on your on on on, on your on your on your notes, yes, you should be able to have the idea or the tone of where your 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 examiner will will be will be asking. So as we continue, the structure, the function, and the reproduction of bacteria. So prokaryotes seem to be found everywhere. Where are they found? How do they survive? How do they proactively uh, uh, survive, or how do they adapt or live? So collectively, this prokaryotic bio biomass overweight of all eukaryotes combined at least by tenfold, ten times that. So this means that for the differences, already you can underline the difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And these uh, prokaryotes, they are found everywhere, including places where eukaryotes cannot. So another difference is that prokaryotes are found everywhere where eukaryotes, there are some parts that they are not found there. Most prokaryotes are beneficial. Humans could not live without them. So there are most part of the benefits that we get from them. For example, in the, we talk about nitrogen fixing bacteria, where there are approximately 5,000 species of prokaryotes that have been identified. That's a lot. More than 5,000 species of these prokaryotes that more than 5,000 species of prokaryotes that have been identified so far. So, however, the estimation of prokaryotes diversity range from, from for, for, this is the estimation, this is the estimation. So be, the, as the, the difference between estimation and the one that are identified is that the one that are identified somehow, somewhere, uh, they have been added. Somebody has dealt with them. Somebody has handled the specimen. Somebody has has, has, has identified and examined them, and to 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 a point that there has been through a process of classification, taxon taxonomy, where they have been classified and named. There have been a nomenclature of them. So they have been classified, obviously, to species level. So. So, 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 but their estimates in their diversity range from 400,000 all the way to 4, 4 million species. So, even though the, we have over 4,000 identified species, the scientists still believe that there are more than that. There are more than that. And you can tell by the, by the, by the, by the, the range in which they have been, the range in which they have been, then estimate. And estimate is actually, far, far, far much higher than the ratio in which they have been actually uh, identified. And bacteria and archaea are the two main branches of prokaryotes evolution. So you've got in your, in your, you know, in your branch, there's a, there's a prokaryote on top. And then what happens then? There's a two main branches of those prokaryotes, which are bacteria and are uh, Chai. So, 
are the are asked to be more closely related to eukaryotes than bacteria and uh, so meaning that uh, between uh, archaea, between archaea and bacteria the one which are closely related or closely to eukaryotes are the okay than the bacteria so why am i emphasizing that because sometimes when 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 you are in a one word form they can say just this group of organisms are closely related to eukaryotes then you must know that they are talking about archaea they are not talking about bacteria so most prokaryotes are unicellular We'll, we'll expand further by what they mean by that when they say they are unicellular. Although they are unicellular and small, prokaryotes are also well organized because we talk most that they are microscopic and how even although they are microscopic, they account to more than half of the Earth's biomass. And achieving all of the organism life function within a single cell these prokaryotes they do. So they are very well organized and furthermore from being well organized, they also achieve an organism life function within a single cell. And some of these species form uh, what they call aggregates of two or more individuals. Uh, and these prokaryotes are typically in size between range from 0 0.5 to 5 micrometer in diameter in size. So that's how tiny they are. So, but some can, 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 can be seen with naked eyes. Yeah, some of them you can see. But eukaryotic cells are typically a, little, a, 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 a slightly larger than prokaryotes where they range typically from uh, 10 micrometer to 100 micrometer in diameter and that's 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 how another difference is that you can deduce from there where you can deduce that prokaryotic uh their diameter is between 0 0.5 to 5 micrometer and the one for eukaryotic is typically between 10 and 100 micrometer in diameter and uh, almost all these prokaryotes have cell walls external to their plasma membrane. So one of the distinctive there is that the prokaryotes do have the cell wall, which is external to their plasma membrane. And we talked here about uh, the figure 2.1. This is just a structure of a, of a, of a, of a, of a of prokaryotic cell, this one. Forgive my notes. And uh, you can see here that there's a flagella. Here, this more or less like a tail shape form. And then there's a nucleus in the center here. And then there's a rhizo ribosome here, you can see. And these little fellas, which are like spines here, these ones, they are known as pili. And uh, this, uh, there's this open space right here, it's described as a cytoplasm. And uh, this here, right here, you can see that's a plasma membrane, which is the cell, which is which the cell wall, which is external to the plasma. And okay, further here, and then you can see here, it's a cell wall. And this whole reddish thing, or this whole outer shell here, is a capsule. So I've always mentioned this before that when you are that when if for some reason they ask you to draw the structure you don't need to worry about being 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 your artistic uh, drawing all you just need to worry about is the fact that your structure is visible is labeled enough or what they can do is they can bring the structure and they could request you to 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 label it so it's best that you you familiarize yourself with this uh, structure and you are able to 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 describe all of these and west not west but the best case sometimes they can just ask you to describe the labelings and those labelings they will have to ask you you also need to 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 to, to know the functions 
of all the lips linked. You need to know what's the function of a capsule. You need to know what's the function of a ribosome. You need to know what's what, what the, 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 the nucleate inside the cell or what is it. So this, the features of this structure is that this, all of them have a cell wall which contains a cell shape and which protect does now the function the function of 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 of, of a cell 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 wall it 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 it, 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 it maintains the cell shape it protects the cell and prevents it from busting to hypotonic environment we'll talk further what is hypoton hypotonic environment we'll talk further about what, what, what is that what is hypertonic environment? What what does it benefit in this in in in, in the in, in the in the in the in the cell or in the, or how this environment is it's 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 conducive for what is this which is which is place for uh, what what kind of flow is there into the water that in the cell and what how do the cell gain in terms of volume and what does the pressure of the cell even have to 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 benefit so we'll also look into this as we move forward so there are three common shapes of this structure of this cell which are so they can request what are the three shapes of this structure which is cocky cocky is just another term for round in Bacali, which is rod, and the helical, which is spiral. And the cell walls are composed of uh, what they call a peptidoglycan, and there are two types of cell walls. Bacteria are grouped according to the cell wall type, and those cell wall types are, we talked about this when we were talking about the, 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 the learning unit, about the outcomes that you know, need to wear, or the outcomes that you need to contain and make sure that you are taking them as an uh, take home uh, or things that you know that after you have dealt with the chapter, you contain and you know all of them are uh, that they are gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria. So, gram positive bacteria have simple thick cell walls, and their cell walls are composed of a relatively large amount of peptidoglycan. Whereas then gram negative have less peptidoglycan. And I'm gonna show you hopefully during the, the, the this session what uh, is a what is a pepti peptidoglycan. And uh, if I don't show you at the end of this uh, session. We will do it when we are tackling the past question papers even there what is it and what is because it they didn't explain it quite extensively in this notes so the, 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 that's the difference between the gram positive and the gram negative that the gram positive have thick simple cell wall and their cell walls are composed of relatively large amount of peptidoglycan but the gram negative I have less peptidoglycan, peptidoglycan, and oh, sorry about that. Can you still see my notes? Oh, you, so you mentioned. Yes, sir. Oh. Can I ask, yeah. sir? Yeah. So sure. for for gram negative, ne, it's still sure. thick. Is it's a simple thick hole? No. But with yeah. less peptidoglycan. No, so, so, so the gram, the, the, the gram one will uh, will have to be, uh, will, uh, the gram one will have to, 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 to have a, 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 although it's, 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 it's less, but they are, they, 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 they are wall. Yes, you are right. What's your question? The question is, is it still, is this still simple? It's still simple, but it's just that in size and shape, it's, it's a oh. bit less. Lower. Okay. Okay. But there's the 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 same that the wall or structure of the cell wall is still simple. It's still simple in a simple okay. form, but not very thick, but it's thin and but 
the, 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 the visible uh, microscopic differences that they have so peptide glycon peptide yes. or glycon, which is the main differentiate the okay, main sir. powerhouse which differentiate the two okay so thank you so, so but can can you see the next slides i my notes are very i think there yes yes i can see sir okay cool and this this gram negative they 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 are more complex they have peptic glycogen which layer which surrounds the plasma membrane and the outer and the green negative bacteria are typically more resistant to host immune defense antibodies then uh, the, the, the these two types of bacteria can be stained so i highlighted here that a stained it's a just like a peptide just like here we are differentiating with a Just like here, we are di 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 differentiating with a peptide glycan. Here, there's also a differentiator, which is a, a stain, where they're saying these two types of bacteria can be stained. Why are they stained? They are stained to determine which gram negative. Gram negative, another differentiator is that gram negative, it's actually pink in color, and gram positive, it's actually, it's actually purple in, in color using a gram stain. So there's what we call a gram stain. This gram stain is the one which you can use to determine which one is a gram positive and which one is a gram negative. Usually in, in the microscopic, when you're doing a microscopic experiments, if you wanna view on the microscope, there's a type of stains, the stains that they use, you add on your slides. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna see that when you're doing your second year or whatever when you do practical so 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 those things they use them to so that the slides can be more visible and when it's more visible there are some uh, uh, types of organism which uh, 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 react or they become more visible using certain types of things is your hand still up or is the whole question it's still see show us no, sorry, sir, sorry, sorry, sir. Yeah, it's still an old hand, okay. Uh, then do they use this gram stain to determine if whether it's a gram negative or gram positive? So this, uh, pro most prokaryotes uh, secrete uh, sticky substances. Uh, what do they mean by that? That form a protective layer and enable them to adhere to substrates. It's that it acts as a protective kind of like a mechanism. Uh, the, the sticky protective layer secreted by this prokaryotic is called capsule. Capsule, so that's one of the terms there. And endospores are resistant cells formed by certain bacteria as a way to withstand harsh conditions. So they have this endospores. What are they useful for? They are the ones that they use as bacteria to as a resistant mm, 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 mechanism to stand those sad conditions that they find themselves in. The cells replicate its chromosome and repeats to the durable world that can protect the chromosome from those adverse conditions. For example, it's boiling of water in the desiccation, and when the environment is good again, the cell will reverse to a, 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 the cell will reverse to a new vegetative growing so that's the mechanism that they use to 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 to, to resist with those harsh conditions. So some prokaryotes adhere to substrates using a pili. What is a pili? If you remember this little fellow here, a pili. This one is like a like a this look like a thorny thing. So yes. they yeah. So 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 those. Uh, Prokaryotes, they adhere to substrate using a pili. So that's one of the function of the pili is that they use it to adhere to their substrate. And this pili are specialized for DNA transfer. They are specialized for DNA transfer. And this process called conjugation. The process called conjugation, a process where the pili 
will transfer the DNA using uh, 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 the, the specialized for DNA where the DNA are being transferred. So the process called conjugation. So many pro, 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 uh, prokaryotes are motile. Motile uh, Those that yes, and moreover, some exceed a speed of 100 times their body length per, per, per second, and the mode of movement is it's 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 it's, it's existed, or they they it's it's executed in the three types of movement, which is flagellum, where it's a basal apparatus which uh, rotates through the flagella and propel the cell. Uh, if you were doing some practicals, if you had practical there, you will see when we go to the left, when we do on the on the slides there, where we will we will we will we will we, 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 we show the, the the structure of the flagellum and you will see it and view it on the microscope and the cosq movement, which is a spiral check, which is in a heli heli helical form, and uh, the some they glide over the jets of slimy secretions so the glides they they, they glide like uh, like a mini pads it glides like uh, gliding like all other uh, uh, what you call these other organisms that yeah, that that glides like uh, I don't want to say slimy there's this group of, but even the snakes they glide and they glide over the slitty secretions, all that. So those are the three movements which they make use of, and finally some prokaryotes glides over those jet secretion. So many of those prokaryotes move towards and away from stimulus taxes and. Uh, Chemotaxis is the movement towards or away from a chemical. So the process whereby this bacteria will be moving towards and away from a chemical is called chemotaxis. And uh, the idea here is that neither do this mitosis nor meiosis okay in the prokaryote, which is like a one statement to say that this mitosis mitosis this prokaryote neither mitosis or meiosis okay in them so the, pro, the, the how we see pro, reproduction in a form of meiosis in most of the living organism or animals and some mitosis in the form of plant animals these prokaryotes don't reproduce like that so they reproduce, their reproduction is asexual by a means of binary fission, binary fission. So, so, so the DNA synthesis is almost continuous. It's almost continuous. It's almost, con and they grow, and uh, uh, they have a, a privilege of growing and adapt rapidly that they are very fast. The doubling time of the E. coli, as an example, is 20 minutes, imagine. And they start with one E. coli cell, and after 48 hours doubling every E. coli cell for 20 minutes, then the mass of E. coli will be 10 times, 10,000 times the mass of the, of, of, of the end. So by binary fiction, how this is the process through which asexual reproduction happens, in a bacteria where a single organism becomes two independent organisms. And, uh, uh, and this binary fiction, fiction also helps describe the duplication of organelles in this prokaryotes and also in, in, in eukaryotes. So it's just a process where you, 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 you organism becomes independent and they become, they get multiplied. So I know it might not be in the notes here, but you might actually need to 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 to
okay, I'm still here. I thought I got cut off. You might actually need to 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 find out the definition of binary fiction and underline it in your notes. So bacteria do not have gene 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 transfer by sexual reproduction. No, we discovered that, but do they but they do transfer their genes and how and why this aid in the adaptation and the in the evolution. We talk about evolution in the past few weeks that they have to be passing over some characteristics and some traits which have to be passed over when we do the family tree and all this and the, the, there are ways in which their genes are transferred because it will be a good question if they, 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 they don't reproduce sexually. How do they transfer their gene? How do they pass off their genes? There are three ways for genes that can be transferred between those cells. What happens is that there's what is called transformation, conjugation, transition, as some ways in which they, 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 they transfer their genes, this bacteria. So cell in for the transformation, cell takes up a gene from the surrounding environment. So they they inherit the genes of the surrounding area. And the conjugation is the direct transfer of a gene from one prokaryote to another by the use of sex pillars to conjugate. And then there's a, a transdirection, which is a transfer of viruses between those prokaryotes. So as far as explanation and as far as describing, you should be able to 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 also make sure that all of these ways in which the prokaryotes or bacteria transfer their genes do and know them particularly well when you enter your exams. And the another session that we're going to go to is about the nutritional and metabolic adaptations uh, that all prokaryotes uh, as well as eukaryotic species are grouped into four categories. And those categories according, they are according to how they obtain their energy and their carbon. Those groups, they are grouped according to those categories. And those categories are how they obtain their energy and how they you know, obtain or contain their carbon. So this is also found in the textbook, this in the table and the page number right there, where you can find the specific and the details with the proper examples of this. So the species that use light energy as are uh, phototrophs, the one that takes energy actually directly from the sunlight. They are known as phototrophs. But species that obtain energy from chemicals in their environment, we talked about how the, 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 the transformations, how they pass their genes, where they take up genes from the surrounding environment. You can find that there are other organisms or species that obtain energy from their chemical, from chemical in their environment or in their surrounding environment. They are known as chemotropes. They're known as chemotropes. And there are organisms that need only carbon dioxide as a source of carbon source are autotrophs. The autotroph. An organism that requires at least one organic nutrient as a carbon source are heterotrophs. So these are the four categories of those prokaryotes, which are grouped into a group according to how they obtain their energy. Or other obtain their energy from light energy. Other ones, they attain, obtain their energy from chemicals in their environment. Other ones contain their energy from carbon dioxide as a source of carbon. Others require at least one organic nutrient as their source. As their source of carbon, and you can see that uh, heterotrophs and autotrophs, they they are grouped according to how they obtain their carbon, not how they contain their energy. And phototrophs and chemotrophs are the ones that obtain their energy. So you might actually have to be, pay a closer details to attention on that one also. That. Uh, and sometimes it's not all of them 
uh, for obtaining energy, but there are two. Actually, the two only phototropes and chemotropes are the ones that are according to how they obtain their energy. These categories of energy source and carbon source can be combined to a group of prokaryotes according to their four major modes of operation. Let me just see something. All right. So the roles of oxygen in metabolism is that uh, there is a mode. Remember, I said uh, phototrophs, chemotrophs, and uh, photoheterotrophs and chemoheterotrophs. You understand what I mean? So this table is the table which is describing the role of oxygen in metabolism, and where that's divided into mode. These are the mood where it's, diff is, 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 is described into two, into autotrophs and heterotrophs. What are heterotrophs and what are autotrophs? Autotrophs are the, 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 the organism that only need carbon dioxide to, 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 to the carbon zone. And heterotrophs are the organism that requires at least one organic nutrient. And out of this uh, 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 autotrophs, there are photo autotrophs and chemo autotrophs and autotrophs. There are photo heterotrophs and chemo heterotrophs. What are chemo and what are photo? The photo and chemo, the chemo are the ones which obtain their energy from chemicals from the environment. And the photo are the ones that depends on the light energy and the source of obtaining their 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 energy so this description here is that as you have the energy source excuse me there's going to be energy source there's going to be carbon source and there's going to be types of organisms in which they are from so out of these phototropes their energy sources that since they are photosynthetic species they will use the sun or the direct sunlight and for carbon source there will be Carbon dioxide, there's also going to be HCO3 or related compounds in this carbon source. And the types of organisms are cyanobacteria, plants, and eukaryotes. And for chemo, chemo autotrophs, uh, is that the energy source is the one that energy from oxidation of inorganic substances we will talk about NH4 and sulfur. And in terms of carbon source, there's going to be CO2 which is the carbon source and uh, types of organism that sulfur and beji atoa beji atoa and also oh sorry and here on the heterotroph there are photo heterotrophs and chemo heterotroph and for photo heterotrophs is that they will use light as a source of energy and uh, in terms of carbon source in terms of carbon source, the organic compounds are a source of carbon. And their organism is that there's a certain unique aquatic and salt-loving prokaryotes. For example, the species of Rhodobacter and the chloroflexus. And for chemo heterotrophs, in terms of energy, is that organic compounds are energy source. And like they, they, they mentioned before, remember here, that they require at least one or more organic nutrients as a source of carbon and uh, and 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 in terms of organism is that many prokaryotes especially clostridium and animals and fungi which are eukaryotes and some plants are the type of organisms within the chemo heterotrophs so you might actually need to 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 study this table and have a clear understanding and familiarize yourself with this table so that in case if the examiner can just ask any question in one form or the other, you may have the proper instinctive idea of what this is. And as we continue with the role of oxygen in the metabolism, is that procreative metabolism also varies with respect to oxygen. And how do they, the following 
are three types of different groups. But these groups are obligate aerobes, which use oxygen for respiration. And these obligates aerobics, they use this oxygen for respiration, but they cannot go without it. And uh, humans are, as an example, we fall under this category where we use oxygen for respiration and we cannot live and we cannot grow without it. The second one is facultative aerobes where they use oxygen when available. So it's not a matter of if they don't have an oxygen, they're going to die or anything like that. But if it's available, they make use of it. They use it. So they have that sort of privilege. So ferment when oxygen isn't available. That's the answer to if they don't use oxygen, what do they do? They use fermentation. And the last one will be obligate anaerobics. What are we talking about again? We're talking about the different types of groups that prokaryotic metabolism uses. Then the last one is obligate anaerobics, which is poisoned by oxygen. So we accept oxygen and we live for oxygen. But these ones, if they receive oxygen, they get poisoned by it. They use fermentation or live in anaerobic respiration. So what happened in anaerobic respiration that the in organic molecule like SO4, NO3, and F3 are used instead of oxygen. That's what they, 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 they make use of. Then it should be noted also that the photosynthesis evolved early in the prokaryotic life. It's not a recent thing. And uh, since cyanobacteria started to produce uh, uh, oxygen about like 2 b 2.7 billion years ago, constructing of a hypothesis of the taxonomic distribution of photosynthesis, which are among those prokaryotes. So that's where the 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 and then we, we, we will be done. And then, uh, so activity number one, I'm not even gonna see you. Activity number one, there are three questions where we're asking you to differentiate, describe the differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, discuss the structure of prokaryotic cell work, and explain how the structure could be of medicinal value. I think we talked about that one uh, another time. Uh, what is a grain stain and why is it import important for the doctors? Let me see if there are. Oh, I described the, the, the answers. Should we just go to the answers or should I give you like a moment to. to, to... Uh, uh, please, sir, can you please go to the answers, please? All right, cool. We'll just go right to it. So in order to, 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 to explain, can you see clearly? Yeah. Yes, okay. sir, I can see, sir. In order for you to, 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 to answer this nicely, you need to form a template. So they might, sometimes they might not tell you to draw a table. If they just say describe, you can just list the eukaryotes, pixels and prokaryotic cells later. But if you tabulate, if you form a table, it helps you to 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 have the statements which oppose to one another like i will tell you what i mean by the statements which are opposed to one another which oh, is, yes, is positive on the side and is negative on the other side but yeah. if they say tabulate if they say tabulate you it's a must that you must tabulate and probably there's a mark or there's a 
they they, they will describe a, a, a mark for for that where it might be two marks or three marks for tabulating or in that form. So here they have described a nice table where they is about prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. They give the the the, the organelles where it's nucleus. It's that structure. It's more or less like the structure. All of this you can find in the structure of the eukaryotic cell or in prokaryotic cell, where there's a nucleus, the present, absent, but it is present in the in the eukaryotic cell and is absent in the prokaryotic cell. Number of chromosomes, more than one in the pro, in the eukaryotic cell, and only one, but not true chromosome in the prokaryotic cell. The cell type extreme usually multicellular in the in the in the in the eukaryotic and usually unicellular mitochondria is it present present in the eukaryotic cell and absent in the in the in the in the in the in the prokaryotic cell chloroplast presence in plants and it's absent in prokaryotic and it's, it's, it's very distinctive here to to indicate that it's presence but in plants and the cell size, we talk about this, that it's actually estimated eukaryotic is slightly larger than prokaryote, that mm -hmm. is between 100 micrometer in diameter, and this one is small in 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 in, in between 0 0.5 to 10 micrometer in diameter. And also, if you can just say cell size, if you can just say large or small, mm -hmm. not good. I put the estimated numbers they cannot it does not necessarily mean that they they can make your wrong and structural complexity is complex it's much simpler the complexity is just a matter of the fact that it is or does it complicated or not but it's mm -hmm. the structure of, of eukaryote it's very complex it's got a lot of levels and a lot of structural and shape is mm -hmm. Multicellular, but this other one is much simpler. The DNA found in the region is found in the in the eukaryotic is found in nucleus. The one in prokaryote is found in the nucleus. And the membrane includes organelle is present in the eukaryote and it's absent in the prokaryotic cell. Lysosome and pesosome, they are present in the eukaryotic cell and they are absent. And in the few sessions that we're going to talk about, we will also focus on the lysosome and perisosome. They are very significant, and I saw them in one of your past question papers. And also endoplasmic reticulum is present in the in the, in the eukaryotic cell, and it's very absent in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the prokaryotic cell. Golgi apparatus present in the eukaryotic and absent in prokaryotic permeability of nuclear membrane this is selective but it's not present in the prokaryotic cell plasma membrane is present in both of them cytosol is present in both of them cell division how do they reproduce in the eukaryotic that's a what that's mitosis we talk about this that they use binary fiction ribosomes they are present but in the eukaryotic it's just that they are much larger and in the eukaryotic they are quite uh, 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 small. So this explanation here where there's a complexity, structural complexity, is an evidence. This this table also is an evidence if you can just, just doing the count. If you're just doing the count numbering and you just mm. you wanna you wanna just check the presence and the absent. You can just see that on the eukaryotic is presence one present two three four five and here is absent 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 so which is an evident to this complexity of the structure that this one is actually much simpler and very complex question two was discuss the structure of prokaryotic cell Discuss the structure of the prokaryotic cell wall and explain how the structure could be 
used in the medicinal value or in terms of medical value. So the, 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 the answer here is that uh, the soul is located on the 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 look on the outside of the cell membrane for in terms of plants and fungi, bacteria and algae and acaria. And we talked about petiglogline peti cell wall, which is composed of disaccharides and amino acid, which gives bacteria some structural support. And we talked about how they help in tuberculosis and other diseases in the previous slide. And also that they help in humans in some diseases, I believe. And uh, let me actually let's go to that structure. Where we put that. Yeah, this diseases such as tuberculosis, tetanus, respiratory infection, and also in poisoning in human, in human. So that's the answer for 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 that. And then, what is gram stain, and why is it important for doctors? We talked about this. Gram stain is a method of staining bacteria using a dye. So a dye that they use is actually has a name called crystal violet. And uh, it's important in that it helps distinguish the different types of bacteria. And it helps distinguish this the gram stain is important to differentiate between the 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 the, 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 the pink one, the pink dye, which is a gram negative, the pink one and the green positive, which is the purple one. So that's how it's important or that's its fundamental purpose. Activity number two, refer to your textbook for the following questions. Describe the differences between phototropes and heterotropes. List and describe three groups of prokaryotes with respect to oxygen and uh, all that welcome, Mpo. You see that you're very early. Uh, we understand that this might be due to load shedding, but welcome. And uh, describe the list of the groups. Should I give you a moment to think about the answers or should we just go straight to it? Straight to it, sir. Straight to it, yeah. Then, a photo they convert inorganic material into organic material for the use in cellular functions such as biosynthesis and respiration. And uh, they provide nutrition for many other forms of life. And uh, this photohydrotrophs, uh, the photohydrotrophs, they depend on the light source for their energy. We talked about this in the previous slides. And mostly organic compounds form from the environment for their source of carbon. So this right here is a very uh, clear table which tabulates the answers for the photoautotrophs and photoheterotroph because they're not only going to ask you in an order where they're going to ask you only about autotrophs or only about a heterotroph. They will mix a bit in the here and there where they were squeezing a bit of a of a chemo autotrophs and photo heterotrophs within the mix right there. And what was question two? List and describe the groups of prokaryotes with respect to their oxygen issue. There we talked about that. There are obligate aerobics, focalated aerobics, and obligate uh, uh, anaerobic. So it's very sim sim simple to think that we have wrote sim the, 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 the same thing. The ones that are, uh, the first one is obligate aerob aerobes. Those ones are anaerobes. So even their, 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 their description here, see here, where these ones, they, 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 they are poisoned by oxygen. They use fermentation or live by anaerobic reverse respiration where they use molecules like SO4, NO3. 
and circulative aerobics we did mention that they use uh, 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 the use of oxygen if it's it is available if it is available and they 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 they, 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 they ferment when oxygen is not available and obligates a ropes is the use of oxygen for respiration and they cannot grow without it and humans are a perfect example of obligate a ropes Any question up to so far? I think we're going to stop from at here for today, if that's fine with you, unless you've got another question. No, I've learned a lot, so thank you. All right, thanks so much for attending. And uh, yeah, you uh, look out for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the recordings. You post that in the chat box and... Yeah, if there's anything, just put it in the chat box, then we will be able to assist you from here. Otherwise, thank you so much. Have a nice weekend. And thank yeah. You. Cheers. Bye-bye.